<laughs> we'll begin recording now. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this is just a great opportunity uh, for us to get together and, and talk about um, how we can be together in creative, novel ways. And uh, I'd like to thank Bigly, the Permaculture Academy, Larry and Elijah Santoyo, um, who have played no small part in, in know, the work of the birdhouse. Um, for those of you who don't know, John and I met in the permaculture design course that was running between 2016 and 2017. And we've really uh, got, out, got so much out of that course and have really just appreciated the work that they do in the community, the work they do educating people, exposing to people to a lot of ideas that they haven't had before and the kind of ideas that seem to change lives and they certainly did mine. So thank you guys for, for joining us today. Um, thank you also to my fellow birdhouse people, John and Bella and Jessica and Linda for helping to put this together in all the various ways you've contributed. Um, so this is, I think our third virtual salon that we've done and we've, we've liked this format. So thank you for, for joining us as we continue to pilot this thing and, um, and engage each other while we aren't together physically. Um, so yeah, we're calling this localize everything permaculture and the power of local networks. And um, I, I, I think it was um, Elijah who, who contacted me about maybe doing this. Um, and this, some of this content is, is content and I, I won't spill the beans about all of it, but uh, it's, it's stuff that's covered in the permaculture design course. There's a weekend that's dedicated to, to discussions about this kind of stuff and it's, um, and it's super valuable. Um, but I think that, you know, beginning in the spring of this year when COVID hit and the shutdown started happening, I think we all started to take a bit more of an inventory about our lives and where our dependencies are and how we work with each other or how we don't work with each other, what we know about our neighbors and don't know about our neighbors. Um, and, you know, as the toilet paper scare of early 2020 showed, you know, we're not as, um, as resilient as we might think we are uh, often. Uh, or at least I could say that about myself and you know, maybe, maybe that's not your experience, but uh, we're here to talk about um, maybe how we can be more resilient and why that is, uh, I would say, you know, a pretty worthy goal is to think about how we can try to meet our own needs um, based on the resources and the skills and the community that surrounds us. Um, so I'm gonna pass it off to Larry here. Uh, we want to have questions that can come in, you know, throughout, like we'll let Larry talk for a while. Uh, he's got a, a presentation, um, some slides that he'll go through that are gonna explore these, um, some of these concepts, but we do wanna hear from you. The idea of the salons is that they're community conversations where we can really flesh out these ideas together uh, and we can be informed by each other's ignorance and each other's knowledge, basically. So uh, without further ado, Larry, these are your thumbs up. For everybody else, um, I'll give you the instruction to go up to Larry, like look on Larry's screen if you're on the gallery view and hit the three buttons and on the drop down menu, select the pin video and that's gonna let you see what um, his presentation is there for a little while. So if everybody can do that. Thank you, Cameron. Get started, thank you. Um, Kelly Rhodes that just joined, welcome. Uh, if you wanna just go up to Larry Santoyo's screen there and click the three, uh, the three dots on the top right and click pin video in the drop down menu. Okay, thanks Larry. Uh, th thank you, Cameron. Thanks, Johnny, Bella, everybody else. Uh, didn't I see Jessica a second ago? Yes. Oh, yeah, there she is. Hi. <laughs> um, and Elijah, of course, is here. Um, yeah, I think that 
it, the, um, it's like the, the COVID thing is just like another day. Okay. It's like, it's not a thing. It's no, it's no big, we trained for this. You know, um, I think that it was pretty crystal clear that not just our, uh, our source and point source for toilet paper was unclear, but we, you know, everybody was kind of, speaking of toilet paper, everybody was kind of caught with their pants down, including the US government. Um, so I, I think it was easy to start thinking about where are the supply lines? Where are, you know, where are the friendlies? You know, who do we know that does what? So, and that has been a big part of our design course and a big part of my kind of interest in everything, I guess, in community in general. Um, uh, we teach uh, a, a big community block in our design course, and this is definitely a big part of it. And we'll kind of bleed into e economics and you know those kinds of things. Um, but I, I wanna kind of arrive at the need for all of those things. So, um, I want to jump into um, a few slides that will maybe help us out um, to do this. Uh, let me see if I can get to the right one here. Hang on just a second. Doesn't really work if I have to go through the whole thing backwards, does it? Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, here we are. Um, I showed you the end already where everybody dies. Um, anyway, uh, okay, so in our class, in, in our design course, we talk about all of the things that it takes to create our sustainable future. And um, it looks like this is gonna make me go backwards. So let me do this real quick. Um, act like you didn't see any of this. Okay, here we go. Um, so when we start the design course, I talk about what, uh, just ask a question, okay? And this is where I want you guys to all jump in. And I don't know if you have everybody muted or not, but I don't mind unless the sound gets horrible uh, that people kind of interject and that we take that time to pause and, you know, get people uh, it, it kind of together on things. Uh, it works better for me if people can ask questions while, while we're doing this. Okay, but great. Idea, um, so... We, let's try that then and just you can unmute yourself and if you hear someone speaking you know just try not to talk over each other but let's let's see if that works yeah let's let's try it for a little while anyway um so the idea would be then that uh okay if we were going to start everything all over again if we were going to do this over again what would we need like let's just take it from take it from the beginning like from scratch you know what what do we need and i just ask people to start yelling out uh, and we put on the board uh, all the things that people say, and we come up with a, a, a matrix of all the things that are that we need. And uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of synthesize it a little bit. But basically, people just start throwing stuff out, right? So then we need food, and we need some you know some way to manage our waste and our water, and our you know um, people always talk about needing security. And we're going to need more skills and legal systems. How are we going to set it up? How are we going to transfer information? You know, what is education going to look like? You know, all these different things that we kind of put around the wheel uh, and come up with the wheel of everything that I um, <laughs> like to affectionately call it. Uh, the idea then gets us to a point where we see all of the things that we need to create our sustainable future. All right, so this is, this is basically our, our wheel. So then it, I got to thinking that, okay, so then this is, this is an interesting exercise because in our methodologies of design, if we're designing a homestead or, or a business or a household of any kind, we go through a, a methodology of design that we call resource and needs inventory, right? So we uh, list all of our needs and then we go and we list all of our resources and see how we could creatively cross-reference those two lists and try, try solving things a, a little bit uh, a, a, from, from within, okay? So 
basically this is that got us started and it kind of got this conversation started about what if we took this and this became us like this became our community what if we each put put ourselves and took a role in one of these things right that um that we that we could become uh easier than we think uh a, a community right it, and we wouldn't have to necessarily live on the same property we wouldn't have to do all these things it would be sort of a collection of contributors okay and so we begin to take responsibility and then all kinds of interesting things can happen okay so what i wanted to do was quickly talk about permaculture design and just to kind of set the stage for the rest of of what I want to talk about because it's really about the principles of design that we have looked at that we start applying to sort of our life, our, our, like real life. Um, th there's uh, um, there's a, a way that we start looking at how things are put together in nature. And I want to make, I want us to start making that translation that, hey, we're part of nature. We, you know, we live on the earth. We are part of nature. Therefore, these kinds of principles that we see outside in uh, ecosystems, they have to be relevant to us and they, they, they've got to be somehow uh, uh, useful to us. Um, so permaculture then really is about decision making and decision making protocols, decision making for problem solving. Uh, and but it's based on these patterns of nature and the convictions of a conserver society. So it's that conserver society that I want us to sort of hone in on and talk about and think about some about what that means. What does that really mean uh, to be to take on those kinds of uh, roles or definitions? Okay, so the interesting thing about permaculture, it's like a filter. Okay, and the ethics is where we start with that filter. Um, the ethics that we c sort of uh, agree about are that above all else, we care for the earth and then everything else is just kind of redundant. So it's care for the earth, care for each other, and then invest everything to those, to those ends. So um, th this is straight out of Bill Mollison's book. Uh, and I, I think it's very eloquent and kind of timely uh, thinking about all the stuff that's been going on. Uh, especially to seek peace and guard human rights everywhere. I think that that is um, kind of what leads us and directs us to even start caring about a lot of these things. Um, okay, so back to our circle, okay? Um, if we started looking at that list, right? It's like, well, why don't we organize everything all at once, you know, like, like uh, all these giant things you've got these giant governments that are doing their job what's different than what what than what really the way that we're doing it now so we we, we look at uh clues we look at our evidence and it's the big bang okay when the big bang hit right then it started organizing life into smaller and smaller and smaller working units so this is this is where we're going with this okay this is what we're, this is how we're going to come to believe this is looking at nature. Nature starts small. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't take like one, it hasn't evolved to perfect one giant flower. A tree doesn't just take one giant flower because it's a better way to do it. No, it still takes thousands of tiny little flowers. Okay. And then they're each on their own to, to, you know, to uh, interact and react to, the, to its own environment. It maintains incredible resilience by getting smaller working units. And we observe that in nature uh, all the time. We observe that everywhere. So that's kind of our, uh, the, the uh, kind of the part of the evidence for what, it, what we're talking about. The other part of it is about getting smaller and organizing smaller. I mean, so the other part of it is that we, we act, there's actual cognitive limit. Like we can know 100 to, to 150 people. That's sort of how our, our, uh, our, our uh, brains work, right? It, there's a, a study Dunbar, Dunbar's number. 
and it looks at any kind of uh, animals and it looks at the size of their brains is a direct correlation to the uh, social groups that they gather in. You know, we see, we see this in, you know, uh, prison societies. We've seen this in, in um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, disaster uh, situations where people can organize and take care of a, a certain amount of people between a, a 100 and 150 people, which, which is very interesting uh, because as it turns out that it, if we had 100 people, there would be enough of us to support 100 people. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Like out of, out of 100 people, um, five of us could be uh, f farmers, right? And that would be enough out of the five to support the other 100. And then we could just kind of break it down from there. So that's, 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 that's basically it. I think that the most important thing for us to start thinking about, especially during these times, is really what do we have to contribute? What can we contribute to our neighborhood? What can we contribute to a community that, uh, that, that isn't being addressed and or that needs help? Right, so uh, there, there it is, kind of uh, in a nutshell. So um, basically, we have a list of you know everything that it takes, and then we're just like looking at it, going, "Hey, it really doesn't. It isn't really going to take like the whole of Los Angeles." I, I always think about like how do you make this the city of Los Angeles sustainable, and I'll ask that as a question a lot of times to to a big class, and everybody will you know throw out all these. It's like the short answer is you can't. There's nothing in natural systems that would lead us to believe that you could organize that many units, right? Uh, uh, and still come up with a, a working uh, uh, unit, right? That many elements to come up with a working unit. It's just, it's, there's no evidence for that. So the idea is that you can't make it, the whole city sustainable, yet every single person could live sustainably if we, had small working groups, small working groups that we duplicate, replicate, help each other, and then solution multiply. Whatever we find out, whatever we don't know, however we can share information, you know, the, the holes in our system are just like these beautiful identify, identification marks that, uh, you know, this is a business that we need to create. And then we put our minds together and start doing that. So that, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Here's that wheel again. And if we started looking at, let, let's say, let's take food, for instance, and we start thinking about like, like just, just start imagining and really start thinking about like, how do you personally, like if this was a list in front of you, how, what would you put down for how do you solve this for yourself? How is food solved for you, right? Write, write it down, how you, how you solve that, right? Or water, where do you get your water from? Do you know where they get their water from? You know, and we just kind of go around the wheel and just look at this and just start thinking, wow, there's a lot of stuff that we, you know, that is out there. And like some of the stuff, I don't know where it comes from. And some of the stuff we depend on so many outside things that are like outside of our even realm, like the toilet paper thing, right? Or uh, like a number of uh, a number of things that have come up, right? Um, I, I don't want to make fun of the toilet paper thing because I know it was serious for a few of you. A lot of people were panicked about that, but it is kind of funny at a certain level. Um, but the idea is so that we we start looking around and we look closely, right? So literally, who supplies our food? Right, and at the same time, we're going. Well, shit! I've been always interested in learning how to grow food. Right? I would love to be that person in a network that does that. Or it's like, <coughs> you know, it's like I come from a long line of migrant farm workers. You know, kind of food growing and all that stuff has kind of lost its romanticism for me. So I'm so happy that I don't have to be the one to supply food where others could sort of take that place and step forward and put, start putting their name as, names down. Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Let's make a list in our, in our network. 
like a list, somebody's name, address, phone number, contact goes here that we can depend on in our circle, right? So we start filling this in. We start filling in the list, right? And then we move on and say, okay, we start going around, okay, this is the health, you know, who wants to do this? Who's got information about this? Who's good at this? Who's already in our network, right? We do the same thing. We start making a list, putting down contacts. Like this is, these are the people in our network that can supply this for us. Um, and I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't find a lot of graphics, but it's interesting that I, I found dozens of, uh, of uh, coronavirus uh, graphics. Thanks, Eli. Um, so, so, okay, so then we go around the wheel, right? So then some, some of these places will be, there'll be like 10 of us and some of them will be none of us, right? So that, that's okay. We're trying to just identify it. And at the same time, maybe spark a little passion from one of us to like, oh, I'm so sick of my job doing X. I would love to learn how to do this. Or I would love to fill this blank. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that and some of those opportunities, which I really think is my favorite part of this whole thing. It's not like where, we're, where we don't have to worry about, but you know, like, what are we missing? That's, that's the part that I think is, is really kind of uh, uh, awesome opportunities for us here. Okay, so here it is, it's a list. And again, it's, it's a bunch of us doing this. Not everybody has to be on the same property. Not everybody has to be, it's just like a network of people that kind of cross over each other and intersect each other. And it doesn't matter. It's as long as we have working units that are cooperating and contributing to a whole and, you know, just like natural systems, consumption is offset by contribution. Okay. That's how things get towards sustainability. And waste is managed for productivity, right? So then we start working together and reduce uh, waste and reduce energy costs and on and on. So we're looking at this list. We start thinking about, okay, so now we've got these different things that we can start looking at. Okay, so if we looked at, let's say, this is just a sort of an academic exercise here. The, um, that if we looked at, if we made a list, this is like part of that resource list, except that you are the resource, you in the community are the resource, right? Here's our needs list, food, water, shelter, right? And then we, we get people to sign up to look at there and we cross reference it, right? So we will end up with, you know, something that starts to fill in, but we'll also see where we're deficient, right? We'll, we'll, have, we'll have resources that we have lots of, and that's great because now we've got a sustainable way to uh, uh, have income. This is our surplus uh, trade goods, right? Uh, unlike some of our other systems that we have set up to where we sell food when we have hungry people. You know, it, it, that doesn't make any sense. And that isn't what we would do in this 100 person network. Okay, so then, the, the unmet needs by our local resources just becomes an opportunity for uh, economic development. This is where we would get together. This is where we would say, look, there's 150 people that need this service that isn't being filled. This is a, this is a can't lose kind of opportunity. If you are this person stepping up to fill this, we've got 150 people waiting for your services. It's kind of like, a, 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 it can't fail. Um, so the idea then, you know, kind of goes from there, right? Oh, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a, uh, this is like maybe 500 by 600 feet, right? This, this piece of land. And each one of these is, is this orchard, you know, kind of like each one of these things, um, there's banana guilds, pomegranates, you know, all this stuff. And you can, you can kind of look at this and, and see how, how kind of nice this would be to have on your property, right? And then to think about like how much work it would take, how much coordination, how much stuff you could produce in this, right? But this is, this is actually what it is. This is like the neighborhood, okay? This is 
this is people's front yards, backyards, side yards. This is just taking an inventory by looking. This is without even trying, there's food hitting the ground. Without even trying, there's surplus to our needs that we could create some kind of enterprise or some kind of connection to solve other people's needs just based on a surplus of what we have, right? Like I said, this is kind of interesting because this, like I said, this is without even trying, right? So we've got this list, uh, like a skills inventory, or this is actually part of, part of a needs list that we were coming up with, right? So that, you know, uh, doctor, childcare, you know, all of these things that we could relate to is like, oh, where is this gonna come from? We, we get in our cars, we drive across town, we make money so that we can go, you know, hire these services, right? When it, it really is kind of like right next door to us. This is actually, not just the list, it's the map. Those dots were, uh, are where those people are, right in our neighborhood, right? Just by taking an inventory, we're able to sort of see how some of this could work, right? That, that is um, a little bit easier for us to understand when we kind of like put ourselves as part of this, part of this network, okay? So then here it is again, we just look at it, start looking at, you know, okay, this is where we were, this is where nobody signed up. This is where nobody in our network knows how to do these things, right? Or this is where we're super fat. This is where, this is where we're good. We could even trade some of these people out. We could do, you know, and then this, these need backup systems. In permaculture, we always have backup systems. So not just one or two things to fill, one thing to fill the need, but a couple of ways that we fill our need, a diversity of ways to fill our needs. And then that way, if we are participating in this group, right, then we ourselves can pick two or three things to do. So we diversify ourselves. So we do, you know, we're the baker and the candlestick maker. You know, it's way more interesting of a life and, um, you know, certainly uh, uh, leads to a lot more resilience. So basically that, that's kind of where, where we're at with this. Um, we start with a resource list, you cross-reference it, you identify the strengths, and then you can immediately look at what kind of re local revenue streams we could have and immediately come up with a directory. This is our permaculture yellow pages, our neighborhood yellow, it's like start here first. You need your computer fix, look here first. You need your you know, uh, work done in the, on your car, or in the yard, or whatever it is. Look in our directory first and then you know, then we identify the weak, the weak links, right? Where do we not have people? And then we immediately start putting things together. Well, does anybody want to do this? Look, we've got vocational rehab opportunities here. We've got cross training. We've got, here's a chance to get out of your job and do something else that you would love to do, right? And also uh, uh, create uh, investment opportunities at, at, at the same time. So, um, there's a, there's a lot of different ways out there to strategize and to, to, uh, um, what, what, to capitalize a business. And, and you know, that, that's probably another part of the show uh, for another day, but there are resources out there. Uh, complimentary currency, there's an hours bank. There's like one of the biggest hours bank, you know, that exists is right here in Los Angeles where you, you don't trade, you, you, you trade time for time. Instead of, you know, we spend a tremendous amount of, of money on uh, services. You know, somebody come and fix this or fix that. You could save that money by just trading time, right? That they come and work for two hours at your place and fix your computer or set up your stereo system or whatever it is, right? And then, so then you are in commitment to that bank two hours. So whatever it is you do, you, you would do for somebody else. It's a bank, so it doesn't have to be just one one-on-one -on -one exchange. It, it, you could do it with anybody. Everybody's hour is worth an hour. Um, you know, there's, there's a great uh, website and a great group of people uh, up in, in the Bay Area uh, um, th that's doing the... Um, the uh, Lyft Economy, um, it, their, their website uh, is uh, Lyft Economy. They got a, a pretty good blog thing and uh, um, what do you call that? The radio kind of program. Uh, Donut Economics is kind of a, a cool thing. I was first attracted to it because of 
donuts, but it turns out that it's, you know, there's, it's a, a resource based economy, right? So it's not just a gross based economy. Uh, and then of course, you know, you could crowdsource just about anything. And that's all, that's some pretty interesting uh, methodologies there. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of probably stop right there. Um, oh, of course, this is a, an important message too, though. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's maybe have a conversation about it and uh, talk about it a little bit more. Awesome, thank you so much, Larry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to open this up for for questions now. If anybody um, had a question that came up during that, or a comment, or a concern, even. <laughs> Yeah, I would have a, I would have a question about uh, vet. What do you mean by cross-referencing? Is it like a way of uh, vetting? Uh, it, it, it could be, but what I was talking about was uh, just looking at our list. Like we have a needs list, and then we've got a, a like a, a seemingly untangible, you know, a, a resource list, right? So. Um, then we can start looking at the skill sets and say, oh, look, we could use this to solve this, right? If, if we're using, um, you know, local resources. Uh, uh, basically, just that part of the exercise that we, you know, start crossing our uh, needs off by local resources. Okay. But yeah, the vetting part, uh, interesting, uh, uh, interestingly enough, that the vetting part comes at our as we gain experience at it so that's the important part here that it's like sure sign up oh well what if something happens well something is going to happen okay it's like and that that the the beauty is that it's just a group of a hundred people that gets to decide how it's solved and that is actually doable as opposed to getting the city of Los Angeles involved in, in the solution. You know, it's like you can work it out to where each little network solves it a different way. You know, like this, you can do this and, you know, like uh, I'm thinking about the, the, the complementary currency. There was a group in, in Portland that, you know, people were selling uh, their local dollars for federal dollars, right? And then the same thing was happening in Tucson and in Tucson, they said, oh, so-and-so is uh, selling the sand dollars uh, for federal dollars. And then they had this you know, meeting and they said, uh, so, it, it, that's fine. And then in Portland, they said, no, 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 you can't do it. So it's like everybody, like whatever you wanna do is kind of how it evolves, right? And then the other good thing, and the other interesting thing is that really what, what we will get is an opportunity to practice, you know, grace, like become graceful at saying thank you for your services or get to a point where we could actually be graceful and say, I'm not happy with the services that I receive, right? That it's like, those are the things that can happen in a smaller circle that couldn't necessarily happen in a larger circle is, is really the point of that. Can these networks be spread out over a city or do these micro villages have to all be neighborly people? Well, uh, ideally they would be within your range. So, uh, and I'm saying it kind of ambiguously because that's how it would, you know, that's how I would envision it. You know, ideally you would want, you know, just because of diversity, you would want some people at the coast, some people in the foothills, some people where you could, you know, uh, you know, infiltrate water, some people where you, you know, whatever it is, shade, sun, you know, you want as much diversity as possible in, in you know, is what I would, is what I would seek. But again, if you, it, it's really, you're gathering because of the contributions. So then you decide whether, you know, this person is kind of like the way that we get our water is way the hell out of our, you know, the, the rest of this group. So it makes more sense that we're going to take on this other way to solve this. So it's kind of, um, you know, it, it's, it's up to the group to decide, basically, is, is, the way that, is the way that this is kind of working. Thank you.
Uh -huh. Yeah, Brandy, go ahead. Um, I have some questions regarding human nature in these types of even small groups. So some of the questions that I would have would be, how do you avoid, because some people would consider, you know, waste management and food to be more significant than say artistic and other ventures. So how do you avoid uh, the people that do certain aspects from thinking that they don't have a more significant role than others and to possibly use that? Uh, small groups, how do you actually avoid um, avoid group think because people would be too afraid to uh, indicate the problems that they're having or having the, the smaller needs met uh, at the sacrifice of the larger group. Does that make any sense? I, I think so. I think so. And it, you know, if you're asking, if you're asking me, then it, it, there is no way to avoid that. That's, that's sort of the idea is that we address it is that we finally tackle it and gain some kind of skill set in working together or we decide that you know this group is not for me and i've tried my damnedest i need to move on to another group and let it be right and it's like not everybody has to think by like us that's kind of the beauty of learning about truly what diversity is you know uh, that that we want you know it to be as diverse as possible if it's causing problems if there's you know then then it, then it's it's a separate problem now there's a communication issue now there's you know mental health issues now there's whatever it happens to be and you know it, it it's like the group gets to decide or you individually get to decide that you no longer want to trade with that person and that that's just you don't even have to explain yourself but i i would hope that people would you know learn how to do and have a mechanism built in to where we could report and there's all kinds of ways that you know people are even finding out that you know if you were an introvert in a in a real classroom you know a face-to-face -face classroom you, you, uh, it's surprising how many extroverts there are now in a zoom classroom you know there's a lot of different ways that we can that we can use uh, a, a lot of different methodologies that we could use to create the space for it to be safe to you know talk about something or just like you know this is this is you know uncomfortable but we feel we need to do it you know kind of kind of the beauty of it is that look this is what it's going to take you know because we're really not going to invent much we're just going to actually commit to doing it you know? i do want to let everybody know that the city does have some um, modeling called map your neighborhood that actually strongly request that, the city, that people start to do this type of breakdown, not necessarily in terms of um, food and supply chain, but in terms of um, grouping up in small groups as possible to know your neighbors, to know what your skills are. It's designed for emergency preparedness. Yeah, yeah. So there are exactly. some blueprints that I think would also mesh with this as well. At least yeah. it, it gives to map to map the people in your, in your group. Yeah, I, th I think that there's there's actually uh, probably dozens of thing that, things that could dovetail and or a point of departure to even start like, oh, where do we start this? Well, you know, there's, uh, what's, that, what's that one thing that everybody's kind of going nuts about uh, next door? You know, something like that. You know, that, uh, has anybody been sort of, uh, I I'm s sorry for kind of smirking about it, but it's kind of am amusing, but it's a little bit, it's also serious. Um, which makes it even more amusing, I guess, for me. Um, but, but, you know, like p the way that people are behaving you know, on next door, which is like, you're supposed to report your, you know, lost cat or your found cat or like, beware of this, but it's just kind of morphed into these, you know, I interesting uh, statements about different neighborhoods and, and whatnot. But there's a platform that you could plug right into. It was like, everybody lists the fruit trees you have and everybody, you know, it's like, you could go on and on. You know, fallenfruit.org is, is in Los Angeles, you know, and they map fruit trees around different, you know, neighborhoods. Yeah, thank you, Brandy. Um, and if you could send that resource to me, and sure. this goes for um, other suggestions or great resources that you might want to bring into the conversation, it's helpful if we can capture those and, and distribute them afterward um, so that we can all look at, um, look at models or you know existing templates 
um, because I think one of the issues that um, is raised for me around this sort of stuff is is kind of questions about um, you know we ask kind of like um, wh what's missing you know what isn't being addressed mm -hmm. and for me what feels like it's missing are, are kind of um, commonly known working successful examples of this sort of stuff um, and seeing how this I mean you know we're, we're referencing next door and and yeah uh, maybe Angela could talk a little bit about the Hollywood Orchard at, at some point during this as well and the great work that they do but but um, kind of the question of like, do you need the hundred people group as a quorum? You need the micro village to, to begin the process of being itself, it's, it's self-sustaining micro village, or what does the inception of this whole process look like? Because one thing we lack is the, the kind of spaces to do this. And I, we're fortunate to have that in a small form here in this, in this conversation right now. Yeah, uh, uh, are you? Is that a question, uh, uh, Cameron? About it was a, a series of statements, I suppose. Yeah. But in a question, um, yeah, I guess I would ask you, Larry. You know, what do you think is the best way of getting started? Um, if, especially for people who might be, you know, feel somewhat isolated, but they're aware. Right. That I I think that 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 that's kind of the one of the things I see as a as a good part of this is that it. it if you are isolated, this is a way to make connections, and it would be it would be more like um, filling in the blanks, right? So you get this list, and people, however that happens, I think it would be it's easier than you would think um, that people just start like listing the skill sets, like you know, where would you put your name? Uh, okay, so that's that's a question to this group. How, how many of us are there? There's 20 people, you know, um, everybody put their name somewhere, right? And then we could go and talk about like, do you think that, you know, you could, you know, or, or you're a shoemaker, do you think that you could make this? Or do you, you know, like, let's talk, let's, how, how would this work? You know, it's like, here it is, here we are. Like, does anybody know anything about water systems? Is it, you know, who knows, you know, and each, of course, each one of these things is, you know, represents, you know, like probably a dozen different things, you know, there are water systems, right? There's gray water systems, there's, you know, uh, roof water system, you know, there's water harvesting in the landscape, on and on. So somebody to take on that role, like, I will help you with my information about water harvesting, you know, in this group. And if somebody else is, a, you know, does other things, you know, here we go. It's like, let's put our name as in as many spots around the wheel as we can and see, see what happens. So, uh, uh, and the beauty of this, I think, is that there is no model. That's kind of what I wanted to, that's kind of what I wanted to say is that there is no model. So we couldn't possibly be doing it wrong. And there's, <laughs> it's like, it, 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 this is what other people will benefit from are us being, clumsy and stumbling and because there is no model to direct us is not a reason not to try this it's like we already so solve these things around the wheel okay all i'm saying is let's think about doing that intentionally and if we were supporting each other in having these things done locally then you know i think there's no stopping us you know what would it take to get you know you have an interest in, you know, food growing or whatever it is. It's like, what would it take for us collectively to get you trained in that so that you could serve that, you know, role? Uh, let me Not just jump in here really quick. Uh, is that Cameron, I think before about just talking about that number, it's like, I think if you start with 10 people, then 10 people committing to sort of addressing the services and needs of the other 10 people, you'll start to like, you know, I feel like that number's like a little bit outside your comfort zone. And it's, so it's like actually kind of like you're in for a penny in for a pound. And I think that that's like enough momentum to get started. So, and it being sort of just 10% of the, um, of the hundred or 15, if you really wanted to go for it, do 15, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's. Uh, Larry is very accurate on the issue of 150 groups become fractious. 
Yeah. It's become uh, diverse, it becomes harder to, to manage. It's not an imaginary thing. Major organizations have recognized that they often have to, have to split their businesses once it hits a certain number locationally because it's just very difficult to manage. Yeah, I, I think that's really an important point, Brandy. You know, we had a we had a, a small network going like out that started in the food co-op, and then we wanted to do like an alternative currency thing, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then everybody's like, "Oh, how do we manage?" You know, like eight hundred of us. You know, we did so well at a hundred of us, and I'm just going, "This is just a screaming at us to." Like, stop trying to make 800 of us work. You know, it's like, what's wrong with splitting off into eight groups that help each other and work beautifully? It's kind of, it's, a, it's been proven over and over. One Just of the things, bang. one of the exercises that you do in the permaculture design class is um, that sort of speed dating where everyone runs around with their uh, uh, paper pinned to their chest with their needs. And oh, their, yeah, yeah. And you have like no time to meet and form <laughs> groups and start a business. That exercise to me is glorious and uh, would be a perfect sort of party to have. Like invite oh, a hundred yeah. and everybody is uh comes in the door they're uh writing down their needs yeah and their resources maybe uh front and back or something oh uh, yeah yeah when when covid stops i promise the birdhouse will have a party like that <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be awesome yeah that, you know like you know if if we were going to do that like what skills do we have to offer this group you know and period and not really no more than that or like what is it that we really need? You know, like I, I, you know, a lot of us have like, if there was, if there was one or two things that you're going to say that you needed, what would they be? And we write those down. And then I, I think we would be surprised at how much we could get done, you know, just by starting, you know, and then look at where the holes are. Great. Uh, Max, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in briefly about um, the fact that there's no model and there, there, we may not need a model for this kind of thing. Um, and, and just to sort of pivot and, and say that actually we, you know, there is kind of a model for it. Uh, it this, is, this is sort of what we're, or one can think about our own sort of affective motives toward forming communities, toward solving problems, and, and like th the positive feeling that we get from being uniquely valuable in a small community and the, yes. the unique motive we have to solve problems that matter to us that are different than problems that matter to other people, that alone kind of does offer a model. It's just, it's not a, uh, right. like a mathematical model. It's a internal, internalized and sort of natural motive that, that guides our behavior anyway. We just don't, don't usually put it into practice this way. Or, or honor or respect or, you know, uh, uh, like intentionally learn from it. Yeah, exactly. I, and if I, oh, go ahead. I, I just wanted to echo that, that I was gonna say the same thing, that I, I think that a part of the, I've been in community services for a very long time and uh, I, I've been doing it, it, it as a part of a city, but I, I realized just in doing it in that, you know, the smaller, uh, you know, element of, you know, the state, the county and, you know, what it belongs to, that it was still too large. And part of it was that there was this disconnection even within the city and, and a lot of it came because people were too dispersed and they didn't get to see one another and the skills and the beauty that they each brought. And so I love what you're saying and, and what you're echoing, Larry, is, is that, you know, smaller is better and our tendency usually is to go bigger and better. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that we get to focus and look at the qualitative nature of who we are and what we have to offer really opens up this possibility to truly be seen. And maybe we won't feel the sense of separation that we have with nature and with others and, you know, with our communities. A lot of us kind of feel isolated in our own little homes. So uh, I love that you are promoting the smaller, uh, more concentrated network because I think that that's what we're up to here at the birdhouse really uh, So so just thank you for for uh, doing the great work I had the opportunity to learn under uh, uh, with you and, and Elijah and, and I love that we're having this conversation now with the rest of the birdhouse community So I just wanted to All say right. thank you
<laughs> All right. I'd like to say something. <laughs> Can you guys see me or hear me? Who is this? Emma. Yeah, go ahead, Emma. Yeah. Do you see me? I mean, am I am I appearing on the Zoom? Because yeah. I got here yes. late. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that to make this work, we'd have to start clearly with a hybrid system where you know, and work on a gradient towards the ideal. And um, it would be a, a, a process of finding out what people need and what people have to offer. And um, we should have some kind of forum, like a notice board. It could be online, probably best online. Um, we could even use one of the social media platforms um, to begin it where we start to introduce and find out what people are offering and finding out and also find out what people need to have done. Like for example, if you need something, then you just post it on the community notice board. And then maybe it would start to organically sort itself out and we'd begin to have a model. That's because, you know, clearly, I mean, I think we'd have a preponderance of artists yeah, no, no commas. Yes. Yeah, it's got to be diverse. We tried, we tried mm -hmm. doing a, a thing where we had um, like 50 massage therapists in one, you know, it's like, no, I think we need to, do, you know, it's, you're just shining a light that we need to diversify our skills. It's I not want just to be the getting only 50 problem. people together. It's <laughs> diversity is what we're after. Yeah. Hey, we're talking about Emma, who's got so many skills to share. Oh, that's so good. she's... That's, that is really yeah. quite incredible. But uh, I would like to say also that uh, what is needed also is to create those opportunities for people to even be aware of the skills that they have. Yes. Because they don't necessarily uh, yeah. know it. They are mm -hmm. something that they take for granted or um, that they stop doing with pleasure. So then they don't even count it as a skill. Although if they were doing it in a different environment, they might love it completely. So there, right. there is also this, these personalities and how to flourish instead of uh, an environment with other people that help you to see who you are also. That's so, that's so beautiful. I, I, it's like it, it started to resonate, you know, that people are doing stuff that they don't like. And maybe it's not that they don't like it. It's just like they don't like the context that they're doing it in too. Yeah. So this would really help with something like that. Great. All right, Ruth, you've been, you've been waiting patiently. Thanks. Oh. Um, so, hi. Um, hi. So, I was asking, I have to read my question. I'm like, what am I asking? Have you guys had experience um, seeing that this could work in poorer communities where um, people have to work many hours without extra time? <coughs> um, I also like it's a perception or a judgment. I don't know. Um, I perceive a lot of people in poor communities are raised to get their self-worth through overworking. So even if you gave them the option to not work as much, like animalistically, like psychologically, like um, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I have to do a lot of therapy to um, not do that. So, um, I feel like even, I feel like they wouldn't necessarily have like as many doctors or as many like IT people or whatever, um, if it's a super poor co um, community. And then, I don't know. Anyways, have you guys had experience with that, with this working in places like that? Well, one, of, one of the, one of the reasons that I came up with these kind of uh, steps or, you know, templates is because of our work in Haiti and in, you know, uh, relief and disaster response kind of areas where all we're really looking for is contributors. So where you are, who you are, who you tell yourself you are really doesn't have anything to do with this yet. It's like fill in the blank. If you know how to clean water, if you know how to offer any kind of health services, put your name down and then we start from there. So it's really, it's not really a, 
a question of will it work in poorer neighborhoods. If you can put your name down somewhere, it will work. You know, and it's about work? finding that network, you know, and then and then helping each other strengthen it. It's hard for me because I feel like if there's um, a disaster like that, people stop. But if they're in go, go, go mode, they don't necessarily stop. Um, not that it needs to be done in poor communities. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering if you had any thing about yeah. that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Larry, I mean, you could talk a little bit more about Haiti or, you know, like things like that. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting yeah Detroit too you know it's interesting just to like think about how I I understand like where you're coming from Ruth and like I I can I can see I can I can I can make that same observation right um but it's just like it's it's like a little bit of like a tweak like a change of the frame of mind and also it's uh talking about community resiliency you know people are more adaptable than we think they are, you know, than we give people credit for, I think, I think so. a lot of times is that, and you know what, if you're overworked, then you don't say no to more work, you just add more work. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like once, you know, to me, at least, at least, at least the communities that I've had experience with, you know. Uh, and the, the more we learn that about you, Ruth, then the more we could say, Ruth, come on, don't take that on. You're, you, you're already overworked. You know, yeah. That's kind of like where, where we want to get to this. Like, this has got to be kind of an intimate circle. You know? and, and like when, when, when I was in Haiti, the, the, the idea was that people felt helpless. I mean, they completely felt like everything, you know, what they had depended on wasn't coming through. And it's like, oh, well, but we didn't lose our skill sets. You know, we lost our job. We lost our house. We didn't lose our skill sets. We still know how to do things. So that, that was kind of the, that was kind of what it took. It's like, let's just fill in the blanks here. Who knows how to do this? Who knows how to do this? And then, the, you know, people would sign up and then we would learn that, you know, they, you know, they, they needed help with childcare that day. And then we started filling that in. And then, you know, it just kind of grew from there. It, it's like, I think I have more experience in sort of uh, uh, disaster or poorer communities than, than anything else. I think it, it, it was hardest to get our uh, economic uh, uh, our alternative money thing going uh, up in San Luis Obispo because everybody was fat and happy. We didn't really, it, we didn't arrive at the need for it. You know, we just kind of impose like, oh, this is so cool. This is like what all the eco hipsters are doing. We have to set up our, our complimentary currency thing. And then after a while, it just kind of fizzled out because nobody really needed it. Like, it wasn't like a concern, you know? So I think that, you know, as, just as we look at this, it's like, what if we just reduced our need to, to earn or reduced our need to spend money because we're working with local people, you know, that are willing to trade with us or, you know, just simple things that can start crossing things off for us and give us a little relief and a little sort of purchase in terms of, of a way to, a new way to see things. You know, I think that one of the, one of the things that was, that was described, I don't know who wrote it, but that we were, you know, that maybe we could do this without money. No, not necessarily the objective, but if we were saving money, right, by, by participating in a group, it is kind of like making money and you know, really, it's it's that saving money gives us more opportunity, time, uh, you know, on and on to to participate in the rest of the group, or to even have the time to help other people. So I th I think there's a there's a lot to that empowerment, and, and I loved what Bella was saying. It, it kind of reminded me about that that the um, people weren't putting down a skill set because they didn't. They didn't really value themselves as being an excellent seamstress or you know person that could had this knowledge because they weren't they weren't like a professional they weren't paid to do that so they felt that it wasn't something to put down but that's not it's kind of the extreme opposite of what we're looking for we're looking for skills you know it's like you are the expert at sewing you know like i wanted to learn how to sew and it didn't matter to me that they didn't 
like their job wasn't to sew, but they were excellent at it. I'm willing to, I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to work with you. You know, it's like we can value stuff that we necessarily isn't valued in, in a larger community. Cool. Thank you. Melanie? Oh, thank you guys. Um, another wonderful discussion on how to maximize and restore our community. Um, I continue the, I don't know, the interdiscipline. I do think that there's, uh, I guess my question is technology wise, as an example from this group, what's the closest, uh, is it Brandy's use of the neighborhood group? Is it the birdhouse connectivity of council members? Like, is it the Permaculture Academy? Like, what's the best example of, um, you know, our community actions kind of folding into this system? Yeah, I mean, Melanie, you I mean based on the groups that you know and you interact with and you've been a part of the birdhouse community and around, I mean, what, what have you observed to be the most effective? Well, we, well, I think Brandy with the beach, you know, the Beachwood Council um, offering, you know, so much information and, and a resource uh, collective space to interact um, is something that, you know, has an example for Beachwood. For me, um, I went to the Permaculture Academy, and the idea of the you know this the idea seems a um, hundred people or a group a, a small localized network, um, you know, full of imagination and collaboration and co-creation. Um, sounds cool. I haven't. I don't know if I've you know. I, I know that. It to, you know, so I don't know as much about the activation of that. Um, obviously, this year has been a turning and an integration of different parts of the garden and the oasis of connection. So I'm, I guess my generic question is, um, has there been a technology that has been utilized um, with the permaculture, you know, creating these localized systems. Yeah, I mean, I think technologies that, um, you know, that Larry was referring to, like the Hours Bank, um, you know, that exists, I think that's based, in, it's based in Silver Lake. Um, and I guess you, you already start from a place of there being the agreement. I mean, it's so easy to have uh, a kind of a negativity bias around this stuff. And I just, I notice it myself every time of like looking for problems, looking for problems, yeah. looking for problems, as opposed to like an opportunity bias, let's call it. So um, what comes to me is like, uh, was it was a question, maybe, maybe it's related to what Brandy said initially, but it's the idea of like, yeah, well, how do you get like doctors and lawyers to see their time as being worth the same as a gardener, for instance? How do you how do you address that sort of thing? So, I mean, I think part of it is that it's 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 forming this group so that it's it's self-selecting. It's like, well, you don't want the doctors who think that they're better than the gardeners, right? You want the doctors who are willing to say, yeah, I see the value of this. I want to participate in this system where my time is valued equally with those with those other things, um, with all those other skills. And if you can paint for them a picture or perhaps as a group go through an exercise like this wheel of everything, um, the, the flower mandala piece that, that Larry started with, maybe you can together arrive at the conclusion that in fact all of those things are necessary. And if you can together as a joint agreement acknowledge that all of those things are necessary, I think that could disarm that um, any kind of a superiority complex. And you're starting from that, that base where one is one because we need it all. And that's, that's the basis of the buy-in to whatever the community is, is to have an establishment that 
the establishment of the, the notion of that kind of equity, the parity of, of those skills. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the hours bank, you're, you're asking the question about technology, Melanie, and the hours bank comes to mind as something that's been, you know, up and running for a while. And, and the technology evolved when it when first started, it was just, you know, like basically, you know, pegs on a board, you know, and we've done it, we've done it like that, you know, just checklists and, you know, notches on a tree. But uh, now, I mean, this is like, every time we talk about this, it's like screaming for another layer of the app, you know, it'd be so easy to just enter information and you just, you know, it, it, it finds others for you and all that stuff. Um, the, the thing I wanted to, the reason I wanted to interrupt really quickly is that what, what, I, what I am talking about is just filling in the blanks, okay? So the equity thing and the time for time, all of that is kind of a, a decision that that group would make, okay? And what, what I brought it up earlier, uh, uh, the, the hours bank thing, as one of the ways that's possible to conduct commerce, all right? And I, I don't see, uh, and actually I would counsel against having just one way to do something or that, uh, uh, you know, that everything is set into like a hard, fast thing. Those services skills, products that we can do hour for hour, let's do that. Those that we can do, you know, with uh, other complementary currencies, let's do that. Let's diversify the way we conduct commerce and trade. So it wouldn't necessarily be that, you know, you would have to find a, a dentist that would, you know, work for the same hour for hour. That, that's not what I'm proposing here. Although that could, in fact, come later as one of the ways to keep incentive and in staying in the group. Oh, look, we have an hours bank. Oh, look, we have a complementary currency system. Oh, look, we've got all these other things. So, anyway, that just to just to sort of interject that that wasn't the the uh, wasn't necessarily one of the things that had to be in play. Yeah. So the the higher generalization there is fulfill all these fundamental functions, mm -hmm. how you get to that, how you arrive at that as a group can be determined by that group. By that group, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Bella. And once again, I would bring back the context, 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 because uh, if you are in a situation of crisis, uh, we have had already the occasion to notice that people's best is coming out Mm. And uh, there is nothing at that point that is more important than just bringing, bring out their skills and be able to help each other. And uh, right. they don't have to hold on to their job. They're not going to be fired because they're not come, going to their job today and all that. So it's, it's bringing something out of people. Now, how, would, how long would that last if the situation was actually finally uh, settling down? Mm. It would look at this point like it's important to uh, know what values are being shared and that at that point it becomes important to uh, do the work of see what are the values shared. It is possible that that dentist is really a, a, very alone <laughs> and, <laughs> and needs a, a very much um, community around that change how uh, his, his notion of okay I've spent seven years or I don't know how long to to be a dentist because now what, what, what I'm feeling like I'm belonging to something and so it sort of it changes notion of the price oh. he represents because he belongs or she belongs so um, so, yeah, once you are not in a crisis mode, it seems like you need to come up with a system of govern governance that everybody is agreeing on, mm -hmm. and that is based on uh, shared values. And that takes time uh, right. to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, Paige? Relationship is something that we all need. Um, and at least in my life, what I'm really seeing now is how it's really not easy to deal with conflict. 
to deal with um, a service that you didn't like or somebody said something that was hurtful. Mm. And I'm just curious as like if relationship would go into one of the skills, which was health, you know, like therapist or healer or whatever, or would relationship be a considered another unique need that would have like its own circle with like different uh, facets of support around it? I think that's an incredible observation and a really good point. And for a lot of groups, it would definitely be that need, right? And I think that there's a lot of, we're talking about the highest generalization, like what is, what is the core, what does it break down to? You know, and I think that each one of these, you know, spots on the wheel it is going to have, it, there's going to be some kind of uh, way that we need a communication and, you know, understanding and seeking uh, an agreement to be uh, like a skill set. So I think that it, in terms of, of a group, you know, that it may be the first thing that we do or that we first thing that we identify, especially if, if you, since you have a page brought it up and I didn't feel confronted, although I'm like contemplating like, well, yeah, shit, that's the most important thing. We need to start with that in this, you know, in, in a lot of groups. But I remember, it, it, like I was talking about Haiti a second ago, they, they have a system there, it's called a combeat, right? And it, it's, they didn't really need to spend time on the part that we're talking about right now. You know, it's kind of a, it's like a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but they already had a, a working way to deal with, you know, uh, a, a problem people or people that needed a bunch of attention or that are always trying to cause trouble or just, you know, like whatever it is, whatever the communication breakdowns are in groups, you know, they, they had a really incredible way of just sort of circumventing it and then coming back around to help people. You know, and it, it just, it was fast. It was interesting. It would be something, maybe we could go down there and like observe and take notes of what was actually going on and get them to come here and teach workshops for us. Bill Mollison always talked about having uh, the reverse Peace Corps, you know, and have people from the two thirds world come to the first world and teach us how to do a bunch of shit. Yeah, there are already some models out there. So let's talk to them. Yeah, Thank yeah you. right. Yeah, so I, I wanted to take a minute um, to ask, it was a question that I'd included in the survey ahead of time for anybody who had a chance to ask, <laughs> um, which was the question, um, it's kind of getting to the, the why, like the, the why would we be interested in doing this? Um, and do, do you think that self-sufficiency for a, a small group of 100 or 150 people is a worthy goal? And what, do, what would we stand to gain by doing that? Um, I guess maybe this is me trying to work against that, that particular negativity bias. You know, just, just, and it would be great if you could just, you know, shout out some answers. If we can start to fill in some of the ideas, like what would we stand to gain from this? And how could things be different if we, if we undertook this? Ruth. I have a question. Do you think that us asking questions means we have a negativity bias? Uh, no, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to you know, like own my, my portion of that, of, of like seeing, seeing problems. Um, I, but, but I don't think that asking questions in, in general is, is one of those. I see poking holes in it as really important. Mm -hmm. And if we're not allowed to do that, I feel unsafe. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah, so maybe some, somebody we haven't heard from to this point. Yeah, Angela, and, and you can call, call these things out so I don't have to keep calling on people. Just go ahead and, and say, <laughs> make your contribution, please. Um, maybe this isn't the right time because I did look at your worksheet and didn't think of anything that wasn't on the list, but I do have a question. I'm not even totally sure what question I'm asking, but um, I mean, presumably, unless we're talking about sort of disassembling cities 
we're not talking about like perfectly closed loop communities, right? Um, in terms of the 100, 150 model. And um, obviously people come and go to, to whatever degree, but I'm curious sort of about like the intersecting circles. I mean, cause we all sort of have our various communities that we're parts of and they don't always intersect. So I guess this is kind of a, you know, maybe this is a really big topic and this isn't the time. I'm just <laughs> sort of curious how that functions in this system. Does that make any sense? Perfect. Uh, yes. I, I was thinking the same thing actually, Andrew. I, I think the idea is that we, when we're looking at how out of control things are seemingly, right, mm -hmm. that we actually do have a lot of control. The choices that we make, how we solve our needs is an incredible control that not everybody has that opportunity. You know, uh, uh, some things are dictated. We get to choose. And I think that the idea of making a self-sustaining closed loop system maybe ultimately would be what would be necessary for all of these things to function for a very long time. But mostly what I think it would do is get us a point of departure to get on to understand that, you know, it's a big world, but it really only takes 50 to 100 people to, you know, to solve our needs. Right, and that we could help each other to live sustainably and make better and better decisions about how to save the resources of the earth, how to conserve energy, and how to support and be compassionate with one another. And I think that that is a way to do it: is to start, you know, with a small working group and commit to helping each other out by goods and services. You know, that we go that far, that we could actually you know, make livelihoods out of this ultimately, you know, but I, I, I think that, you know, right now that is how we live. You know, what I was trying to do is, is put together a, a, a model based on an actual pattern. You know, we all have these needs and we all solve them differently. That is how we're doing it. What I'm, uh, what I'm proposing is that we do it a little more intentionally and in that if, if we even formed a group out of this today, that at least that's a place to start. Like, I'll use your services. Why am I going over this place when I didn't even know you offered that service? I'd be happy to, you know, work with that. And then, we, and then we kind of go from there. I mean, it, literally, it, I think it would be that easy. And then, and then we learn to tighten the circle, uh, you know, as resources and information come in. So, you know. When we engage in this, do we um, uh, sign some more, some sort of indication that we are? How do I explain this? There are laws regarding commerce and services, whether we like it or not. How do we separate out from the laws regarding how those services are allowed to be? Do we, do we sign into some agreement that we are not invoking those? Uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily uh, you know, saying that we should be breaking the law. Uh, um, I, I don't, you know, it, it would be up to those, those people playing. I'm not exactly sure which, which, uh, which, which, like uh, example, services, someone what, might what? Have, have been a dentist, may not have his license now, has those oh, services, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, or, or, um, I do a good that, you know, or uh, a seamstress or something that, that I yeah. promised you this, but I didn't provide the service you thought that you were entitled to. Is the restitution discussed amongst the group? Does, do, you, do you agree to see your larger rights to the group's collective, like that kind of stuff? Uh, exactly. You're, you're, at, you're asking the questions that I'm hoping that the group will figure out. That you're, you're, yes, we're gonna tackle all, all of those things. I think that if you're like a hobbyist brain surgeon, you should disclose <laughs> that. You know, uh, and people, you know, should actually have an agreement of what they're getting into, you know, of course. And I'm not trying to take away from any of that or start, you know, I'm not trying to be as subversive, only as subversive as we need to. But I do know that we can start trading amongst ourselves, you know, like making our own directory and using ours, us first. 
you know, and if you're, you're telling me that you're not a licensed dentist, I probably wouldn't go to that, you know, but other people might, but you know, like, or, or whatever it is, you know, I, I don't know. So th that would be, it'd be easy to solve in a group of 50 to 100. Sure, thank you. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, uh, how many how many insurance agents do we need in the hundred to 150 uh, person the, network? <laughs> well, with with 150 people, we could probably have our own, you know, uh, 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 insurance kind of policies. That's true. I know that if we if we we're like, how many people are going to buy a car this year, you know, or anything, you know, a camera, you know, if like if we bought a we could get a fleet discount, we could actually get an extra car if we did it together. You know, and then give it to somebody who could never afford one, or that needs one, or like we could, you know, cannibalize it for parts. Or I, I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff that we could rethink what insurance means and is. You know, I, I, I just think that it, it, there's a lot of way to insure our future, and trusting each other is one of them. You know, and we don't need fucking permission to do any of this stuff. We just need each other. Yeah, Max. Uh, I don't know how how related this is, but I'm I'm curious to see if it might be. Um, I some of you know I, I founded and advised a group of students at USC, and I've been people have been asking me, you know, what's what's the what's the point of this? Why would people join it? And I I wonder if the the thinking might be helpful. And and what I've sort of realized only in the last few weeks really is that uh, you know everybody has social networks based on different things. You have social networks for hiking, you have social networks for fitness, you have social networks for beer drinking or whatever. And really what, you know, the, the initial stage of something like this seems like it really could just be, hey, we're going to set up a scaffold for a social network based on these values. Mm -hmm. And from that basis, everything else comes. And, and that's really the, 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 the reason that I think that this is so promising, something like this is so promising, is that the, the, the possibility of having something like this be socially validated uh, is, is really where the intrinsic motivation kicks in and where, you know, you end up with, with multiplication of people's value because they, they don't even realize that they can think this way until they're supported by a community that commits to the same stuff. So I, I think maybe, and, and I don't, yeah, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, but thinking about it as like a, a, a purpose-based social group that you don't have to retreat from the world at first. <laughs> you don't have to keep the world out, but it can be an additional niche that you sort of build that exists behind the scenes and within the regular yeah. social environment. That's at least how I've been thinking about it in a way that, that, that makes sense to me. I, I kind of like that, Max. And I, I like the, the, um, the inherent importance that it immediately brings. You know, and it really is nothing other than you know, hey, it's, who's got skills, right? It's like, th that's what we're looking for. Who's got skills that, you know, that want to offer them up to the community? And who's then, freaked out about the state of the world yeah, and wants exactly. to, like, have a support group about that? And, it, like, by default, it would take care of so, you know, so many of those kinds of issues, you know? And then, and then people would be able to bring up stuff to, my, to your attention, Right to each other's attention that like, I wasn't even thinking about that, you know, like when when the whole lockdown thing started, I'm going, well, why is every like, why can't you just stay the fuck home? You know why? It's like, what is the big problem? Right. And of course, I was just thinking about me and the people that I know, you know, it wouldn't have a problem. But there's a lot of people that they're not safe at home. And I, here I am speaking for, you know, seeking peace and guarding human rights. But. I wasn't seeking peace and guarding their rights. They're not safe at home. They looked forward to leaving home and going somewhere during the day that they didn't have to be at home and now they have to be at home. And I hadn't even thought of that. It's like, I, it's like it's just like learning a different way to think and a different way to solve our issues without feeling the hopelessness that seems to be uh, uh, pervasive and uh, contagious, you know, just listening to each other, you know, we start going down that, that way. Great. Did you have another? Uh, about, uh, so, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say about this social network, 
uh, you're talking about what platform do you think would be best to use to form that social network so we can start doing this is this a question for for Larry uh, question for max sorry oh um one more time um the question was what social platform uh would be good to use would, do you think we should do this on the social platform that exists already the social network um that you're talking about i mean that we could form right now like facebook right. or instagram uh, or something. it's quite i think for finding people uh i'm not totally sure what would be the best for that i i think that once you have people and i, I think it can be i mean I, i'm not sure what the model for finding these people are but i i imagine it's pretty straightforward everybody has one or two friends or you know one or two people who know one or two people mm -hmm. kind of thing um, once you've identified the, the people, you know, the group that, um, that I'm involved with uses Slack. We had, we just have a Slack, uh, which is a team working platform and we have channels for all these different topics. Is that a generational thing? Uh, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> it's, but, uh, it's, it's really helpful and, and people can sort of engage with it and have different conversations on different topics. And, um, it's, it's been really great for facilitating um, sort of team based discussions on on things that each team is, is motivated to discuss. But that's by no means the only one. I think there, there are tons of these services and I'm, I'm almost aged out of the uh, <laughs> what's really cutting edge these days. I've never even heard of Slack. So, oh, my goodness. It's really it's really wonderful. It's a great okay. team building, uh, not team building team team managing platform for I think corporations use it a lot. Um, mm. Would we be able to all like this group? Um, yeah. Maybe all yeah. just start there. Well, like I, community. I mean, anyone who wants to. Uh, Emma, uh, are, you, are you volunteering to start a Slack based on this? I, I, I think someone who already <laughs> knows what Slack is, but I, but I will definitely. Uh, I can look into it. What about Tori? She has her hand up here. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. Uh, um, I would see this group maybe as um, a resource for us to come back and help each other problem solve for the other groups that we're creating in the world instead of trying to make all of us a group. Um, and I mean, I'm just hearing so many ideas and questions and I think the only way for me to solve it all is to go try it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, I don't see personally, I mean, I can get the idea of a local group, but I think, you know, groups can interact with other groups and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think we'd have to, wouldn't we? Don't you think, yeah, Larry? Absolutely. I think we'd so, learn that way, yeah. That's, that's okay. one of the, the things that, um, in, in the model that, that Larry proposed initially, is that um, where there are gaps in the existing skill base, that's the opportunity for business development or some kind of economic development in that area and the places where there are excesses um that those are the things that can be used for for trading um outside of that outside of your group to other groups who might have other excesses or other things that you don't have so just back to the original model that yes the intention is not to be um well i mean i can't speak to the overall intention of everyone but the way that i see it is you know we really benefit from um from those exchanges with with groups outside of our own um they bring in new information they bring in different kinds of energies you could think of it even in to make a parallel with ecosystems about the way that disturbances come in um and they bring that's how seed dispersal happens right because a bird from the migrating bird you know shits over here and there's seeds in the shit and that changes conditions in a, in a different place so we need you know the, the different uh, the different networks, um, you know, playing with each other. Definitely, definitely. I like the analogy. Yeah, <laughs> bring it back to shit. If we can, it's all about conversion. Different groups shooting everywhere. In that just seeing value in shit, then I think that's a pretty good <laughs> starting place. Um, so as we start to kind of land this ship, it'd be great to hear from anybody who hasn't spoken up or who has had a question they're like i don't know if this is a good question i don't know if you've been kind of sitting on anything it'd be great to it'd be great to hear from you before we before we close yeah kelly um first of all 
um, thank you, Max, and thank you to everyone. We thoroughly enjoyed the discussion. It's very interesting, so relevant, you know, speaks to my heart and soul. Um, it's comforting to see all your faces, hear the conversation that is um, happening in our home, not to, near to the degree or to the kind of polished um, and details that it, that it has, but <clears throat> it's, uh, it's lovely to, to meet you all by Zoom. Um, and one of the pieces that I think are, uh, that I wanted to kind of um, contribute or say is that when we spend time around, um, you know, in groups, and I know we all know this, I just kind of want to say it out loud. When we spend group, when we spend time in groups, in smaller groups, we are more likely to learn what the person next to us, what their skill is. And then we all are, you know, have similar skill sets, and then we continue to build on those. And then the next generation comes into that community as if that's just the common knowledge, which it is, um, rather than, you, you know, some kind of a structured, forced, um, you know, school setting. It, it is an evolution of these are the, these are human skills that we share and contribute with each other and that's the piece i wanted to kind of bring out mm -hmm. yes thank you kelly <coughs> Lisa, were you yeah 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 oh i was just thinking that um it's also kind of goes along with when you um are speaking with a stranger that like that the analogy that if you're like driving in your car and you have road rage and you're so pissed at the person because but then you realize that it's your brother or something um <laughs> i think that the smaller communication levels of human interaction increases the care and um decreases the divisiveness that um you know comes with like the large scale uh, crumbling system that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, the larger systems, I mean, you kind of, um, the consequences of, of your actions can be kind of the responsibility for those can be diffused amongst the group, right? But in, in a network, um, you know, you might feel the sting, you might see the, the direct impact of even an unkind word that's said to someone, you know, and, and the, the big effect that that can have. Um, and I think when I asked the question earlier about like, what do we stand to gain from attempting something like this? I mean, there, and, you know, Max kind of referred to it as well as like, there, there could be this conceived of as this overarching skill of like, neighborliness or something to think of like conviviality and neighborliness as a skill set. And that what flows from that is meeting the needs of people, not in an abstract notion, but because you know their name, but because you know, like, you know, we learned about Ruth that, hey, Ruth, like, you don't need to take that on. And we learned about me that like, you know, hey, Cameron, like, just like, let people have a bit of a free reign in this conversation to work out some ideas. And we don't have to have the, the, the negativity kind of like finding problems through it, you know, so, and even what's happening in the course of this conversation, right? you know, Emma asking questions directly to Max and kind of um, people asking other people to, uh, you know, to, to share their, their piece. Um, I think you can kind of start to see, uh, we're, we're modeling a little bit of what we're talking about in the course of this conversation, which is what the place where I hope that we, that we could get to. Um, so, yeah, so we are drawing to a close here but i want to thank everybody so much for for joining us today um larry thank you for the presentation Absolutely. um elijah thank you for proposing this um thank you all for joining it's it's great to to be able to have this um and to have the space of the birdhouse as a place to have a conversation that i i don't know where else we could be having this particular conversation and the fact that we could do it together uh, makes it really special and just to see your faces in this way, it, it means a lot to me. Um, so just as a sign off, the, yeah, Larry and Elijah from the Permaculture Academy, they just started uh, the PDC cycle 
I think you're sold out or you've got a waiting list now. Uh, we have a waiting list. Yeah, we, we're, we've got a couple more seats actually. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I will send out the link to them, uh, to their website and their courses in the follow up to this. And we are the birdhouse. Um, and we're here in Beechwood Canyon for those who maybe aren't familiar, but um, I'll send out some information about us as well. And just encourage you to, if you appreciate this conversation, to, to join us uh, as a member. We have a membership system and, um, you know, help us do more conversations like this in the future because we will be hoping to hold salons every four to six weeks. Um, seems to be a pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty good interval for us and, and really just satisfying conversations. Um, so thank you again, everybody. Thanks for your guidance, Cameron. Yeah. Yes. And thanks very much, Larry. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, Bird House. Thank you, Bird People, for, for hosting this. Uh, we really appreciate, uh, you know, this, um, this space to be able to incubate some ideas and spread some of the thoughts out there. So I imagine that we'll probably have an interesting follow-up to this, um, like when Cameron says that he's going to send out that follow-up email. So I think there's definitely probably going to be some sort of or you know burn after reading sort of thing and just get out there and do it you know so yeah yeah absolutely okay well stay tuned for the follow-up email everybody and, and we can reconnoiter at that point but um yeah so just thanks again to everybody and have thank a you. wonderful afternoon thank you everyone thank you guys thank you. Adios. Adios. <laughs>